you all. This has been a long time in the making, um, but I'm finally here on YouTube. I just want to be here to impart some words of wisdom, help with natural remedies, uh, motherhood in a holistic way. I am the mom of four, soon to be five. I'm an all natural mom. Um, I go between vegan and vegetarian. My children are completely vegan. Although I've let my son try an egg here and there. So I'm not a, um, I understand that everybody's dietary needs are different. For me, vegan was the way to go. One day I will do a video about that, but I just want to introduce myself in this first video. Again, my name is Amika Ali and this channel, I'm really excited that you guys are here to learn about holistic pregnancy, natural remedies and cures. Um, so I thought I'd start out with my journey into how I ended up into this lifestyle. I always wasn't this way. I grew up in the South. I, um, I'm, you know, um, <laughs> I ate everything, you know, pork, beef, chicken, you know, you name it all. So I grew up in Houston. My family were all from the Gulf Coast. So I grew up on a lot of gumbo and boudin and dirty rice and all that good stuff. But um, I started having digestive issues when I was in my early 20s after college. Um, I would, you know, be partying, hanging out with my friends and all that good stuff. And every time, you know, we have a couple of drinks or something, I mean, I would just be like doubled over in the bathroom, could never really understand where all this pain was coming from. Well, I ended up going to see a gastroenterologist um, that my mother recommended to me. My mother has Crohn's disease, so uh, which is an inflammatory bowel autoimmune disease. So, you know, just to make sure that I didn't have anything like that, I went to her gastroenterologist. They did a colonoscopy. I mean, who has colonoscopies at, I was 23? Yeah, but basically all they told me was you don't have Crohn's disease and you have a inflamed colon. So we're going to give you this prescription and go on about your life. It's called irritable bowel syndrome. Well, I'm one of those people that I question everything and I'm like well if I wasn't born with this and it I didn't come into the planet this way then I don't understand how you can tell me I'm going to have something that that I'm just going to have to live with so I never really accepted that at the time I still took medication so I accepted the prescription I would take it I actually took it for like <laughs> couple of years, to be honest with you. And I remember I was sitting at my then fiance's uh, studio and a commercial for that product came on. And I was like, listening to all the side, I had never seen that. No, as a matter of fact, it wasn't a commercial. It was a news. Um, I was watching MSNBC or CNN or Fox or something. One of those, and they talked about all the different, uh, they were talking about the meth, the medication came up and they talked about how it was being recalled. And there was these um, people that were starting to have heart attacks. And I'm like, oh Lord, well, mm. <laughs> that's the end of that. So I just stopped taking it cold turkey. Well, sure enough, I'm at work a couple of weeks, months later, and then I have these ep this episode that I used to have before I started taking the medication where I was just like in this chronic pain. Um, I was doubled over, like I was laying over the file cabinet at work in my office. A coworker had to call my husband, well, fiance then, and he came in, he was like totally freaked out because he had never seen me this way. He He met me, you know, in the medication phase. So he's like, well, let's go to the emergency room. And I knew what the drill was. I'm like, there's really no reason to go to the emergency room. All that's gonna happen is by the time they see me, I'm not gonna have the pain anymore. Um, they're gonna do some blood work, maybe or maybe not. And then they're gonna just send me home and tell me absolutely nothing, which is what they usually do. But he insisted because he didn't know. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to entertain you with this. So we go there, sit there for hours. It's all kind of craziness in the emergency room as usual. Um, and by the time they saw me, I was perfectly fine. The pain had passed. And again, no one had any type of remedy or explanation as to why this was happening other than, oh, you have irritable bowel syndrome. So what I started doing was documenting 
what I was eating. Because I'm like, something is triggering this and I cannot, I'm not taking these medications and I have to figure out how to get rid of this on my own. So my brother-in-law told me about something called noni juice. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll drink that. Disgusting. I could not. I was like, uh, no, this isn't going to work. Healthy for you, but mm, so um, I would just pay attention to like when I felt gassy, when I started cramping, and I just eventually started phasing out foods. Now, I had already phased out pork. I hadn't eaten that in years anyway. I never really, really was a big pork eater. I would just, I liked bacon. That was it. I never was like, I need the honey baked ham on the holidays or, you know, pork chops, unless they were like smothered or something. But yeah, I wasn't a big now. Some sausage, yeah, like in my gumbo. Yes. So I gave up, I had already given up the pork. And um, then it was like, all right. You know, I started getting into lamb because my husband had these friends from Mali and they would make these different dishes. And then I, one of my girlfriends, her husband was from Trinidad, Trinidad. So, you know, they had like lamb curry and different stuff like that. But I realized like, oh, this does not digest well for me. So I had to let that go. Um, so I'm like, OK, no pork no lamb what's next <laughs> then it was like okay let me try the chicken and this and that and eventually it just I realized like my body does not process meat I cannot do this so and really I didn't want to accept it oh oh I thought it I thought it because I'm like <laughs> what about my boudin and my gumbo and my <laughs> my dirty rice what are you talking about but my husband was like look you can't do this. This is, I, like, that freaked me out. I never want to see you like that again. And I guess we're going vegan, which was, like, a freaking curse word to me. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? But, you know, I accepted it. I um discovered, and I, we went hardcore vegan, like, did all kind of research. So I never really, I never ate soy, did not do soy. Um, because of the things that it does to your hormones. Um, yeah, and plus I don't really like the texture anyway. I know you can make all the kind of stuff with it, but I wasn't really feeling that. So I found out about Dr. Sabi. And so when I say we went hardcore vegan, we went like Dr. Sabi vegan. So that was like a very limited vegan diet. You know, even certain vegetables we didn't eat. And I did that for years. So I pretty much wasn't eating out anymore. I was cooking and it was really, it was, it was tough at first. Cause I'm like, I don't know what to cook. I don't, I've never been a vegan. I don't know any vegans. Uh, my friends are like, when I go to their house, like, you know, you want to buy these oxtails. Like, yeah, and I do, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm going to be good about this because I'm working on healing myself. So yeah, I started drinking like Moringa um, and just really getting into it. So fast forward, I've been a vegan for a good at least 15 years now, believe it or not. So um, I've gone through different phases of it, um, following different thoughts with vegans. So I don't even like to say I'm a vegan. I'm more of a plant-based eater. Um, because there's a whole lot of things, veganism from when I became one, there was no, all of this process stuff that exists now, you know, the beyond meats and the impossible burger. There was none of that stuff. There was, you know, I'm making my own veggie burger patties. I'm doing all that stuff on my own. These things, they didn't exist in, and they're not necessarily good for you now, but I eat it here and there. Um, and I can definitely tell in my body when I've had something that's processed or had too much of the processed vegan products. But um, I still pretty much follow Dr. Sabi, but, you know, with some iterations, I understand that there are other types of food that are okay to eat. You know, things evolve and he did great work, but excuse me, I know that um, there's other things out there. So the success of that is I've been able to have for natural births and not just, I'm not just a natural birthing mother, I'm a home birthing mother. So I've had all of my children right here at home. I'm gonna have this fifth fifth one here at home with 
sometimes with a doula, sometimes without. Um, and I'll share those birth stories with you all for those that are interested in going through that process. You know, but it really starts with your mental uh, thoughts and, you know, that mind body connection, knowing that I'll, I mean, I didn't question it. I, I don't know anyone who's home birth. Um, other than my grandmother, I believe had most of my aunts and uncles at home. Some of them, they did it, um, weren't born at home, but, um, that was it. No one in this generation that I knew. And I, it was never like a question for me when I got pregnant with my son. It was pretty much like, yeah, I'm not going to the hospital because they be doing too much, you know, already I mean, for my friends that already had children, A, I don't know anyone who's not had a cesarean. I'm like, well, something's up with that. So whatever it is, I I don't want no parts of it. I don't need them giving me some drag about why I need to have one. I mean, I'm perfectly healthy. I'm a 20 something year old person. So um, yeah, other than my little bowel issues, I'm perfectly healthy. So I don't I just don't foresee that everyone that I knew was healthy for the most part, too. So I will share some of the stories that my friends have had on how they've been talked into cesareans or the crazy stuff like uh, the baby's head's too big, so we need to do a cesarean. Like, what? Like, (laughs) your body, it expands. So I'm saying all that to say um, it's been a it's been an interesting journey. It's been a beautiful journey. And because I first started on my natural journey as first going vegan, and then really getting into herbalism. Um, Although I've been, I'm a, I'll tell you guys now, like I'm like a forever student. So I already had like a bachelor's and a master's, but went back and got another one in in, um, metaphysical sciences and holistic health. So I know a lot about what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've walked the traditional commercial route, you know, but I leaned in to herbalism, into holistic lifestyles, into veganism, into just holistic living and how it's a 360 degree experience from your diet to your mental health, to your physical health, to birthing children naturally, to raising them naturally. All of my children are vegan. They don't even, you know, they don't want no parts of me. They're not interested at all. One of my children, um, he won't even eat a, like a Beyond Burger. He's like, if it's not like the fruits and vegetables, if he can't identify it as its living source, then it's just not ingested into his body. He's, he's my particular one, you know, but it's a really great thing. They're all very healthy. They never had any, you know, any major ailments, really. They didn't start getting sick until they really started taking martial arts later on in life when they would be in close contact, you know, with other children. So, I mean, it's a good thing in the sense of, you know, you got to get sick to build up your immune your immune system, which really is nothing but your lymphatic system. So when they would pick up those things, I know that it's time for a cleanse. So even in my approach to uh, wellness is different. Like I I've ne- they've never taken any types of medication. Um, I make everything from their elderberry syrups to their detox teas, lymphatic cleanse teas, blood cleaners. You know, they're like five and eight taking chlorophyll, you know, to deodorize that body. Um, a little castor oil for a bowel movement, just different things. But I'm really excited to impart those words of wisdom on you. And in my next video, we will, I'll go ahead and start talking about the birth stories. Each one is different. Again, I've had four and I'm going into my fifth. So I am looking forward to sharing this with you, being with you, um, health enthusiasts, future moms, pregnant women now, you know, men that are looking for a healthy lifestyle. I'm here to share this with you. So I look forward to uh, going on this journey with you on YouTube.